on January 4th, 2022, and I'll call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Um, our, all right, we are ready to go live. We're already live. <laughs> Most of us, anyways. Oh, you want to go to work for FCAP. <laughs> That's the sum that. total of my skills. So, so we just got there. All right. So we will call it to order again at 532 p.m. on January 4th, 2022. This is the Finance Committee meeting. The first order of business is to um, look at the minutes from the previous meeting on December 7th. I make a motion we approve the minutes of December 7th, 2021. Second. John and John, any discussion? No, let's do a roll call vote starting with Skip. Uh, aye. Skip, say your name. <laughs> Skip Olmstead, aye. Votes, aye. John Pareski, aye. John Pachurik, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. James Canby, aye. Beth Brown? Beth Brown, aye. Allison Vanderbilden. Allison Vanderbilden abstain. I was I not there. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. You're not mm -hmm. muted, but we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh. Huh. How about now? I can, I can hear you. You, Beth can hear me. Nope. Still can't hear you. I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear anything. Beth, am I loud and clear or am I quiet? Nope. You're loud and clear on my computer. This is a, this is a town of Deerfield problem. Up. Yeah, I was going to say thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, abstain. Oh, oh yeah, she abstained. She said, she said she abstained because she wasn't present. All right. It's like she um, so next Sounds order of business, um, and hopefully Allie will have sound by the time we get to this point. Um, I'm going to bring the planning for our next meeting up sooner. So we were just saying that um, probably starting mid February we will meet weekly to begin looking at the budget. Um, so if um, for me, the best day would be Thursdays. Does that work? I, I have a periodic meeting on Tuesday evenings that throws Tuesday out. Um, can everybody do Thursdays? And, and I think the week of the eighth would, would be an okay week to start. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, Allie or Beth, you want them to say something? Yeah. You want me to speak? I turned my volume up, my input here. Can you hear me? We yes. can hear you now. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so Thursdays? Uh, the second Thursday of each month, I'm at the fire district from 6 to second 7. Thursday. Any chance right. we could go on Monday or Wednesday? That works for me. Monday is kind of a you want to avoid oh, Wednesdays, Wednesdays are not good because of select board. Select board yeah, I'm just throwing it out there, but yeah. No, we're meeting back room. Yeah, except we're going to meet jointly. Select board is the tentative yeah. plan. First meeting of month is going to be on May 15th. On, on Wednesday? Yeah, I, How think, about I think Wednesdays are out. Oh, you said Mondays don't yeah, work. Yeah, Mondays are also out. Oh, they don't work. Okay. All right. Tuesdays are good. I can't. I just, you know, it's selfish. It's so I, have, I think it's third Tuesdays I would have to miss. Allie, you have a meeting on Tuesdays, don't you? Periodically. Excuse me. Um, I have a um, recurring meeting fourth Wednesday, fourth Monday, and I want to say second Tuesday. Tuesday, third Tuesday is out. Second Thursday, you said? Was your my conflict? I think as long as we get a quorum, right? Right. We can't live without Brenda, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I any of the rest of us can skip. Certainly for preparing the budget, yes. Um, otherwise, otherwise Thursdays are are good. Um, okay. So maybe on that week, could we do a Tuesday? On a second Tuesday, did somebody so say that's that's Allison's? Alice, Allison's not available on the second Tuesday. Okay. 
when we get into the, um, you know, the, the rhythm of, of budget season, um, it might, you know, it might not be realistic to have a hundred percent of everybody at every meeting. Um, and I'm, I'm okay. As long as every meeting isn't scheduled when I'm not available, we had it a few years ago where it was consistently the day <laughs> that I couldn't make it. Um, I'm, I'm okay missing, you know, if it's, one, if it's one a month for the meeting, I have a conflict. I'm okay with, with that. I just, you know, I think a consistent day might be better okay. for the committee. How about time? The other, 5 PM? the other problem you got is that on uh, Tuesday or Thursday, if we meet in the back room, they won't have the internet there. Only in this one, as far as I know. The what? The, the hybrid, the, the hybrid, can we do a hybrid yeah. meeting. Can we do a hybrid in the kitchen? Not that I, no, not that no. I know of. So, right. but Tuesday. Sh Tuesday should be fine and Thursday should be fine. Right. Okay. So why don't you just develop a schedule and say this is what it's going to be and whatever happens happens the other one you might look at is if we've got a couple of people who can't make a thursday meeting could we switch it to tuesday that week yeah i was, yeah. I was going to suggest maybe february 8th and then and then most of the rest of the time we're on thursdays except again mm -hmm. that and the february 8th would be the first week right right and that's a tuesday that's a tuesday that's, so february 8th is a tuesday and then do Thursdays the next three weeks, the 17th, the 24th, and the 3rd. So 2 8, 2 17. Is, uh, is that possible or is it, are, are, are you okay with me saying that? Yeah. Um, and what, then maybe. Then what were those dates again? again? What's that? What were the dates again? So meet on February 8th. 17. And then on the 17th, the 24th, and then the 3rd of March. and then meet March 8th, which is a Tuesday. A Tuesday? Just mm -hmm. that one. Right, and then go back to Thursdays, Thursdays for the next three weeks, four weeks, 17th, 24th, 31st of March, and then the 7th of April. That's probably enough. We don't need to, do we need to schedule that much ahead? Is, is that is that too difficult for all of you switching from the Tuesdays to the Thursdays? No. Not for me. And if and if we schedule it far ahead, it's it's great for somebody like me. Okay, okay. Great. okay. If we if we wanted to put them all in for the entire until town meeting and then take them out as needed, that would be like amazing. Um, but but I we don't have to. <laughs> no, I didn't ask. Oh, okay. I, that's that was a, was the question I was going to have is that we need to know when when the plan yeah. is for town meeting. I mean, right now, if I counted those correctly, that was eight meetings. Uh, it's tough to get the budgets and get people give people the opportunity to ask the questions and, and talk with the whether it's department heads or whomever. Right. There's also a week in there, Brenda. I think you skipped the week of. Um... January 31st. I, I think so. we'll skip that week okay. just, just so I can get all the budgets put together. Is, okay. is that all, all right, what we were talking about? No. I see. Okay. To do what? Skip March 31? No. The, that that, first that first week, that February. first week of February, wait until I can oh, get okay. all the budgets. And then you, I think you also skipped that first week of March because it, it starts in January. So would that be the third? Oh, no, she said March 3rd. Okay, I just didn't catch it. Thank you. Did did then we switched? I missed that. I missed the third also. So and then did you say the eighth after that? The two yeah. was the Tuesday the eighth. Yeah. Okay, so there was just two Tuesdays. The rest were Thursdays. Right. I mean, it's supposed to be the what the fourth Thursday or the fourth Monday in April or something. It, yeah, the, the last the last Monday in April, last so Monday. it should be the twenty fifth of April if we hold it up, um, according to bylaw. Bylaw. And that means that the warrant needs to be posted, or typically is posted, the month before that, or not posted, it's but the the uh, it's supposed to close date, thirty date days a month before is a month before. Yeah, so and then has to be posted seven days in advance of an annual meeting. That would mean that a month before the 15th, 
on the 8th of March. Right. Which before the last meeting of the board. Which, which, which is, is fine okay. because we're still ironing out the financial, as long as the articles are set in the warrant, this, the articles that the information detail doesn't have to be in them at that point. Okay, so what time on all those dates are we gonna meet? Just 5.30 five, p.m.? Five would be great. People? Five o'clock? Everybody good with five? I'm available regardless, just let me know what time. Okay. Five, what five, is five. the approximate Three. duration? Hour and a half to two hours. A short eternity. <laughs> <laughs> However long we can we can keep our minds together for no three hour meetings this year, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the goal. They do sometimes <laughs> run quite long, depending on how much discussion we have on the topic. But the goal would be under two hours for each meeting. Right. Um, Does anybody have any binders that they would like to reuse? I do. Uh, so we could do that. Yeah. So would you drop them by Pat's office at some point time or mine? Yep. And then I'll know what I need to order. Okay. We change the dates, but you know. Well, yeah, I'll probably put They're in already your full of papers. <laughs> I already got budgets in them. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. All right. So we're gonna meet five thirty or five? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. You guys are going to shoot me. If we met every Tuesday instead of on Thursdays at five o'clock, then that would be regular. Um, I would not, my meeting on Tuesdays is at seven, so I could still make it or I could just be late to it. We would lose Allie one. It's one the same one we're missing anyway, so it's fine. So we miss you anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's do every Tuesday, 5 p.m., starting on the 8th of February. Okay. So that'd um, be. I'm sorry for that. That's be that, February 8th, 15th, and 22nd. Mm -hmm. How about the first? Nope, nope. We're not going to meet the first. That's too quick. And then March 1, 8, 15, 22, 29, and April 5th. And let's let's just do them right up to town meeting. We'll we'll tentatively lay it out, and then we'll cancel the ones at the end because we'll be all done. Okay. So that would include then the twelfth and the nineteenth. Yep. Five p.m. Okay. So now we are, I think, ready to talk about these financial indicators. So let's start with indicator number five, which is uncollected receivables as a percentage of tax levy. Um, basically, it's really good. So. <laughs> People pay their taxes, we collect the taxes, they come in, so the assessors and the tax collectors and all the people in town are doing a great job paying taxes. And there's not really much to talk about. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the one that I think we can all agree on. It's good. Good. Okay. Indicator six, operating <coughs> expenditures. We don't need to vote on these, right? Just the consensus, right? Right. We're going to, so my plan is, is for us to discuss everything, I'm going to write up the final remarks on everything and then do a summary sheet and pass that out to everybody and we'll vote on that okay to make sure that we all agree sounds like a plan with that but okay so indicator six um is operating expenditures and um when i i, I did go meet with the assessors they didn't have a ton of feedback. They did look at it and were interested and we had a nice discussion about it. Um, but the, the one comment they made was that we had gotten through the 
tax bill and the assessment of the tax bill was unfavorable because of the trend of it being so high. And their comment was, well, the reason the tax bill is high is because the expenditures are high. So when we get to the expenditures one, which is indicator six that we're looking at now, they're suggesting that that should be unfavorable as well, since that's what's causing the um, increase in the tax bill, which seems like a um, very good point. I disagree. You don't agree? You, you disagree, you don't disagree. I disagree. I don't think the expenditures are bad. The trend. So if we look. That's per, at, I mean, that's just one out of seven here. Yeah. Um, so I added one thing to. This isn't going to share very well. So I'm going to share this. Um, so this is indicator six. So if we look at the total operating expenditures, if you remember for the tax bill one, I kind of looked at just if you take 2021, 2011 to 2021, what percent change is that? So in expenditures, total expenditures, it's a 40% increase in expenditures. If you exclude the debt and the warrant article, so just operating expenses, it's still a 36%. Debt, for what the debt, debt services that include excluded debt? Yes. Yep. And then, go ahead. Do you know how much of that is driven by just the inflation? So if we look at constant I wonder what happened in 2019, 2018. It's 23% in constant dollars. Is that the right thing? In what regard, John? It's just so high. Percent change. Oh, I see. Wasn't that when we voted uh, to transfer money out of our uh, stabilization account to spend uh, three quarters of a million dollars on fixing sidewalks? No, that was just last year. I don't know, last year or year before. That, would that was about, this past vote for 2022 that we haven't done yet, right? No, that was for this year. It and was that just, was just uh, probably year. from the town garage, because I think they held off putting it onto the tax rate until a year later. But that would be excluded debt. Right, and, and that happened in like 15, 15. if I remember right. 14, uh, 14 15, or 16. 15. Yeah. Yeah. But this includes excluded debt, right? right here excludes debt. Because we have to pay for it. Yeah. Even though it's excluded, it's in the tax rate. So we we should be looking at some point we should be looking at operating expenses and generally speaking operating expenses would not include any excluded debt right. unless you had a situation where you bought a big piece of equipment. Uh, and paid for it. And I don't know when we did that last. Well, I don't know, but in 2018 and 2019, I think those are the two years that we covered um, paying off the uh, Oxford land. Because we did that over a period of two, two fiscal years. So I think that's why both of those are a little higher um, because we chose to use free cash and pay those off. And, and some of the money that we had collected from sales of land. Because your debt service is high in both cases there. I'm, I'm looking at the, the total expenditures. Well, we could take a look and, and, and just double check it at our next meeting to see what because I don't think we need to spend a, you know, a lot of time trying to... No, I've gone through the numbers, and I yeah. know they're correct, but... Yeah. No, 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 just um, where, what, where... But where, what it was, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, but I, I can't say 100% sure. But the last few years, 
there hasn't been much of an increase. It's pretty much been steady. Well, in 2020, you know, the schools forewent their, their increase because right. of COVID. Um, 2021, we had a lot of dollars available to us for COVID again. Right. But 2019 was a jump. Right. That's why I say in 2019, if you look down uh, under debt service, 18 and 19, you have those larger jumps. And I think that was because we were paying off um, the uh, Oxford property. It might have been we paid off the energy loan also at the same time. I can't we remember pay, for sure. But, uh, we did pay off a couple of loans at some point. They weren't huge numbers, but you know, a couple hundred thousands. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think the. Um, but you add that on top of the other. Debt. Well, that's the thing. When yeah. you add that when on top of it, it does. But I mean, if you look at this column here, right here, mm -hmm. that's excluded, right. right? We've deleted the warrant articles and the debt service from this column, and we still have a you know six and a half percent increase. Well, the excluded debt. No, but right. this column, ex so total expenditures is yeah. everything we spent, including excluded debt. Okay. This column right here, I deleted the warrant articles and the debt service, all the debt, not just excluded debt, because that gets rid of capital expenditures. Okay. And things like paying off the Oxford, whatever, yeah. and all that stuff, right? We had a similar increase in 2014 as well. 14 yeah. was the first year of the 14 or 15 was the first year of the garage, but that would be down here. This is broken up by um, if your um, breakdown here with percentage of total, it looks like. Every subcategory is maintaining its same percentage, roughly. Uh, so it's not like any one thing is getting the only out thing of really balance. That, or anything else. The only thing that is stead that has really increased is warrant articles, and that's you know from one to four percent, which is yeah. Yeah. So it seems like everything is just expanding. Yeah, so the other thing I looked at was the same, the same calculation percent change since 2011 in each category. So if you look by category, general government was a 46% increase, public safety was 68%, education was 32, public works is 23, human services was high, but it's a very small budget. Line items, so I'm not as worried about that. Right, um, culture's 30%, debt service. Benefits went up 46%, so um, total expenditures. When you say increased. benefits, what? Uh... That, that would include uh, insurance, uh, Medicare uh, expense, um, unemployment, workers' comp, does that include the uh, million dollars a year that we are now paying into the? Uh, well, it's not a million, but it, well, but whatever the numbers. The, are into, the, into Franklin retirement. Franklin yes. retirement, because yeah. that one yeah. has gone up substantially year. Oh right, year. it has. Okay. And it's not coming well. At and, least and for the it, next ten or twelve years, it's not. It went thirty-five or something. Amount amount that year. That off. Yeah. Or for twenty-three, it's going up again. 23 the year, or is that the percent that we're paying? No, well, we are paying 23.07% of our wages into, yeah. But it's also gone up like 10 or 12%. I can't remember the exact figure. All right. So anybody have thoughts on an assessment for this? What, what would we consider? And I wouldn't object to some sort of discussion as a percentage, annual percentage, we consider to be a reasonable increase. 
I, I am. Um, oh, sorry. I can't see who's speaking. Um, I think that the percentage increase for expenses as well as revenue, it, neither of those is really meaningful on their own, but um, taken as a ratio of each other. So it's expense to revenue. I think that's really meaningful. So like, it's hard, it's hard to decide if this on its own is good or bad because we don't know the rest of the story with this one, but if the expenses are growing much faster than the revenues are growing, then we have something to be concerned about. Well, well, there is something else to compare it to, and that's population. The our mm -hmm. estimates are increasing, even though the town population has been flat for 30 Ten years. years. 30 years. Um, you know, then that's something to worry about. But sometimes you're doing investments in things like a wastewater treatment plant or something else that needs to be repaired or restored or renewed um, for the same population. So it's, you know, de depending on what it is. And then there's going to be you know, growth related to having employees. Right. Well, I mean, if there is growth, then there, yeah. there is growth. If the town is the same size that it was in 2000, why are we spending more money than we did in 2000? Adjusted for inflation, obviously. We have the same amount of streets. We have one new street. <laughs> Public works hasn't gone up much. Yeah. I would say it's also possible that the, and I, I haven't been here since, you know, two, 2000 or even 2010, but it's possible that the values of a community can evolve. Um, I don't I think that's a really hard thing to evaluate and really a hard thing to judge, but um, it's possible the town of Deerfield, you know, could underspend or overspend or, you know, any of those things are, are feasible. Expectations. Yeah. Well, expectation <clears throat> that the roads are wet at all times and not icy, as a for instance, or the expectation right. that um, we have uh, a visible law enforcement presence everywhere, including the schools. You know, um, right. right. And and then you know some of that is is brought on by state mandates. You know, I, I think part of our public safety increases are, are due to that, right? Well, last year they were, but I'm not sure in previous years how much they were. Well, I, you know, you, you'll see more of that in fiscal 22 and in fiscal 23 because of the requirements that John has now to have people that go through a full academy, no matter whether they're right. a part-time person or a full-time person. Yeah. We one of the things that we do need to keep in mind, I think, is that there is a cap, and that's the two and a half percent. Right. That our tax rate cannot exceed two and a half percent of our, what valuation is it? Previous year. PQV. Previous year plus new growth. Right. Well, no, I'm talking, no, talking, about, I'm talking about grand total. Of, grand total. Of essentially debt. our assessed value. Not debt. I'm talking about our grand total expenditure on an annual basis. Our tax rate cannot exceed $25 per thousand. Right. Of our assessed value. That's true. Well, but whatever. And we are now at 15 and change. And we were, if we go back 10 or 12 years, we were at $10 and $11. So we are now up for the sake of round figures, we have a 50% increase in the tax rate in the last 10 years. Right, and we looked at that as a different, you know, no, I, I know, that but as my, my point is eventually, if we were to keep that up for the next 10 years, and, and I'm not suggesting we are going to, but if we were, and we were sitting at $15 now, then we're talking it being $22.50 in 10 years or 12 years. That's why the assumptions then, keep then increasing the value because that value keeps moving up. Mm. They gotta do it willy-nilly, don't they? <clears throat> they, don't, they don't, I don't know that they have that 
Oh, sorry, they, they contract that out. Yeah, they may have, but- They contract it out. They have the final say. And the state really has the final say because they're the ones that sign off and say, yes, you use these figures. Mm -hmm. But that's the one that's always, you know, over the past years, the one that's concerned, that I've been most concerned with is that uh, $25 per thousand. Not that I'm concerned only with that. What I'm concerned about that is that that's what business industry looks at, or one of the big things that they look at when they're coming to a when town. They're, coming to town. they're not Greenfield, give or take, they're at 20, about $24 a thousand. And they're not getting a whole lot of new businesses moving into the town. Look at um, so if we look at expenditures by category and as a percent of total, does anybody have any takeaways from looking at that? Which one is this? Um, 6A. That's what I was commenting on that it doesn't look like any one category is running away with it. Seems like it's a more general sort of inflation across the board. Like everybody's getting more, so. No, debt service, not the last few years, but go back to 2015. It jumped up quite a bit. And once it jumped up, it stayed up there. That's from the highway because garage. Because we have the highway garage yes. and it has continued on. Yep. It will jump up again. Yeah, when the um, sewer hits. On, on the other hand, um, we also had a period back in the early 2000s, uh, or actually 19, 19, 1991 and 1995, we put the elementary school on, and then in 95, we put the high school on. And somehow or other, we were still able to keep the tax rate at something approaching reasonable, I guess. My takeaway from this is that I actually feel like education is doing a pretty good job remaining steady. Based on this graph, it looks like it's like the big is any worse than anybody right else. It, <laughs> right they're like the big they're the big green thing but they're also pretty stable if you go back you, and, and you i know i've heard the complaints about the cost of education but it has been pretty rational for several years the last well last 25 years basically it has been living. if you take a look you know in that three percent range Ex excluding debt service. Basic operating expenses. Anybody have a recommendation for a an assessment of operating expenditures as a whole? I think it's favorable. Not in, it really isn't increasing very much, adjusted for inflation, huh? So a straight two and a half percent increase each year would be 28% and we're at 36 for operating expenditures. I think that's favorable. Mm -hmm. Is it sustainable though? That's the, the, thank you, that's a good word, sustainability. And I, I don't think it really is particularly when we look at what we've got coming up. What we've got coming up is scary. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm also of the opinion that our maintenance budget should increase, but I don't know where the money's going to come from to do that. So if we repair all of these buildings, we need to then keep them up. There's plus inflation. <laughs> there's Naples. There's there's enough. The school somehow or other managed. Uh, it's not not that I've spent a lot of time going through, but. I did have taken a look at the elementary school over the past few weeks where the meeting over there to the teachers. Uh -huh. And you know, you look at the school and given the fact that it's a thirty years old, in fact first day this Monday was the first day of the thirty first year uh -huh. in the elementary school. And the school was it appears at least to be in pretty good shape. And I do remember the selectmen screaming and hollering at the school committee that even though we had an 80 year old building over here that they decided to tear down as soon as the schools moved out of it, they had complained that it wasn't being maintained well. So it seems to me like the schools are doing a pretty good job of maintaining it. I've yes. been just in the past couple of years looking at their. Um, capital expenditures. They seem to have a very methodical, we're going to work through, we're going to replace these floors, we're going to replace these doors, and they have a plan, and they're executing their plan. It just seems to be. Yeah. With the exception of the roof, and that wasn't their fault. I can't blame the schools for the roof. But I'm, not, we're, I'm not sure where we got the architects. Came out of Boston. It's an expensive... Uh, that was one of the conditions that they had was that the uh, state would designate the architects. So the Boston elite picked the Boston architects to design a school out here. And that should never happen. We should pick our own people and not let Boston dictate who we're going to get for an architect. Because then you've got Boston figures all the way through the architectural fees and everything. And they could care less about it because they're not personally involved with somebody who lives in Deer or Conway. All right. Have to plug their <laughs> architecture. Plug Go their local areas. people. But, um, okay, so operating expenditures, I hear one vote for favorable. Um, I hear a marginal, maybe, I, because. I would, go, I would say marginal. Uh, I, I would agree. Mar marginal. I would say it's more marginal, marginal than. The other two. Marginal or right best. Yeah. Or should we but, vote on? We could. Are there um I would I'm I'm evaluating basically what's here, I think. You're it's watching? easy. It, I'm just evaluating what, what's here, what's happened, you know, two thousand eleven to two thousand twenty one. I think, you know, we're kind of imagining what this will look like for the next 10 years and I think the story might change but right now I don't feel like it's I don't feel like this is this is bad it feels appropriate you know I don't feel like spending is out of control based on this um yeah it is the one area that we put a lot of attention into every year so yeah right and we know we're not I mean like I've been part of this committee for a few years now and really everything is getting looked at except for the fire department, honestly, because we don't get to see that, but everything else gets looked at. And, um, you know, I, it, it, like I said before, in a vacuum without comparing it to revenues, I hate to judge it, but I don't know. I don't think it's that crazy. I think it will get worse though. I think like you asked me, you know, after we do some of these projects, I think it's going to be worse. So I've heard two favorables, three marginals. Do you have an opinion? Did you say marginal too? Yeah, I said marginal. Four marginals. All right. Marginal plus. <laughs> marginal so minus. what's the rationale? The rationale is that um, it's pretty balanced. No one category is running away in any way. Um, it gets a lot of oversight, um, but the total is increasing faster than our two and a half percent. So um, 
that's the hesitation is that if it continues, if you look strictly at the operating budget, if it continues to increase at this much larger rate, it will become unsustainable. Is but if fair? this is, Julie, if this is all, um, I get a uh, feedback now. Sorry, that's why I keep stopping. Are you guys getting that too? Uh, yeah. It's better now though. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep my microphone exactly here. Um, this is all this is all expenditures, but it it isn't just expenditures that get paid by taxes. Right there's things in here that could be grant funded or, you know, and, the, and, and that's where that extra comes from above and beyond the two and a half percent. Is there any grant? Mm -hmm. There's no grant money in here. When, when you're talking about warrant articles, um, no, probably not grants, but you're talking about free cash. Um, but if we've excluded, if right. we're looking at the excluding those two, the debt service and the warrant articles, okay, then it's, there's some state aid there's taxes and there's local receipts are all used here. Right. And when you talk about taxes, you're talking, you know, we, you, you keep saying, throwing out the two and a half percent, but you gotta keep remembering that there's always new growth. And, right. and lately our new growth has been high. So that, that adds into that. So when you, when you were comparing the 28% to the 36%, I felt that that seemed pretty reasonable. That's pretty good that, because that, we've yes. had the new growth. Yes. And I, and I know, you know, sometimes that new growth is short lived. Um, but some of it is, is not. And, and, and that never gets taken away. I get that, but right. Some so we that, have that new go growth ahead. is going to drive up some of the expenditures too. <clears throat> There's more services, or, or more allow, services are going to be needed. Or allow the town to properly address some of the things that need to be done. Yeah. You know, sometimes sometimes that new growth creates more work. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I was trying yeah. to say. Yeah. <clears throat> some of the new growth, I have no idea what the percentage of it is. Uh, but some of that new growth depreciates yes and it like does the solar not, properties and it does not depreciate off off of our taxes our ability to tax right so then it yeah. gets spread so if we're only Almost. talking five Which or ten thousand dollars a year it's not a big deal but once we start talking you know fifty or a hundred thousand dollars a year we lose a hundred thousand dollars a year because something's depreciated off we still have, which is why your tax bill went up 30 percent or whatever. what's depreciating what real is real estate that's depreciating or are you no, talking about pro personal property talking personal about like personal solar property solar panels big one. personal property and commercial personal property <coughs> commercial yep. and industrial because those things depreciate all the time like it assess values let me give you an example i asked the assessors for a listing of how much money we brought in from the uh, DEDIC through the industrial park. And if I remember right, this is about the same figure as last year, $339,000, because last year I remember mm -hmm. rounding it up to 340 because you probably got 50 or 75 trucks over there that you have excise taxes on. And the bottom line is that my taxes went up 15% this year, but theirs didn't. If their taxes went up 15%, you would add 15% on top of $340,000. It didn't go up anything from what I can see. Well, maybe, maybe it didn't depreciate. Maybe somebody moved out. Maybe they're gone. No, where you get depreciation in personal property is there's some personal property that, for example, furniture. And I, I, I'm talking, so about real, I'm talking about real estate taxes, though. And, well, no, that's, what, that's what that is, right? Real estate? That's real estate taxes. The only. only real estate taxes that, and I wouldn't call it depreciation, is when, they, when you end up removing uh, property from the tax rolls. That's what I was saying. That's what I'm alluding to. And then the other one is, and we're not doing it now, but we did it years ago. Uh, we put some of that 
property in 61A or, and that brought down the that taxes. lowers their taxes. Lowers, lowers the tax rate. Yeah. I'll give you an example of that. I was looking to buy 26 acres of land up on top of the mountain. And I was going to buy it until, and I looked and I says, how much are you paying taxes? Oh, about 150, 200 bucks. I says, for that, it's worth it. Except for one thing. The real taxes were $2,000. And I was going to have to turn around and do a study every 10 years to keep that in 61A. Otherwise, my tax would be $2,000 every year. And I said, I'm not going to spend the money to buy 26 acres of land and pay $2,000 in taxes to let it sit up there and grow wood. Now, 100 bucks at 200 bucks, that's fine. That's not a problem. But that's, that's part of the. That's, John, that's $80 an acre in taxes. And you're complaining about paying $80 an acre for taxes? Yes, I am. <laughs> Let's get through this. So the operating expenditures. So now I'm leaning towards just favorable, but we need to keep an eye on it because um, it's going up. Right? I think we Did keep an eye on it every year. We do. When we sit here and we go over the budgets and we try and limit it to two and a half percent. Well, watch. I said right? all that stuff and I didn't write it down. No hmm? one category is running away. Um, it's well watched by uh, by the whole world. Um, Thirty six percent improved the growth. So there are definitely some categories that have increased quite a bit. Um, so we should just continue to pay attention to that fact. Is that which is the which one went up the most? Q, Q and services percentage wise, um, but it's the smallest. I was going to say point six percent of the total budget. Yeah, and I think some of that human services uh, cost was due to recognizing what we really needed for the senior center, and I mean because we moved that position from a part time position to a full time position, so on and so forth. But other, so they're 128%, but it's a small part. So the other ones that are high, um, public safety is 68%. So that's gone up a lot. Right. Um, what are you looking at? Huh? You got something there. Oh, okay. So looking I have over here. one Back more here, row that's <clears throat> sorry. not on the handout. I'm sorry. About right. That. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. My bad. So public safety, 68%, general government's 46%, and benefits is 46%. 10 years, right? In 10 years, yeah. Is part of public safety related to scams? Because it didn't exist in 2011, but it does now. No. Um, scams is under warrant articles, isn't it? Oh, there, okay. You know what, though? Um, it's just police. I don't, it, back when it was just Deerfield, so prior to fiscal year 2015, we were appropriating a certain amount of money to support the ambulance service. So, yes, up through 2014, we would have had some money in there for the ambulance service. It wasn't, it was like 100 and, 180 some thousand. So after 2014, that went away. So that would have been money coming, making, sorry, making public safety smaller. No, 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 you're right. You're right, but that's a warrant article. So a warrant article is not included in. That's a stabilization account. Well, it's not a, not a stabilization, but, but it's an enterprise fund enterprise now. Enterprise fund. That we support with a warrant article. So if we're yeah. talking about without the warrant articles, then, um, then it shouldn't have an effect. But if we're talking about with the warrant articles included in there, that's an expenditure that has grown greatly, yes. And I think public safety is just the police department and the inspections department, right? Pretty much. And, and the ambulance. Oh, and the ambulance. 
Yep, the ambulance would be in there. That's a that's a two thirty. So so that uh, that's that's public safety. Two hundreds are are public safety. So um, the but the amount we pay to subsidize skims that's probably the wrong word. Is is a warrant article. Is a warrant article. It is a warrant article. So that yes, we are using free cash almost almost consistently. Um, so from 2015 on, that would have increased the warrant articles. Actually, looking at this, Public Works has only gone up 23%, which almost makes me feel like he's not. I think he's done a really good job of managing his costs. Uh, maybe to the detriment of some things not getting done, but don't you agree? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> the, there were a couple of things that in public works. Uh, we had budgeted the the dump or transfer station years ago, that account usually sat with fifty or sixty thousand dollars in it that got turned back year after year after year. Right. And we did bring that down. Yes. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was one, and there was there was another area in there before before Kevin came. Uh, It was another, another right, but, but these expenditure categories are based on Schedule A, so this is based on our actual expenditures. Okay. Yeah. Not on the appropriations. Correct. <clears throat> okay, let's do one last go round on this and then we're going to move on because we got to finish up by seven. So um, we have at least two favorables. Anybody else voting in favorable? There's a vote. Yeah. So we have two favorables, three unfavorables, and one ambivalent wishy washy chair. So we will move on. Wasn't that two favorable, uh, three marginal? I mean, three marginal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean unfavorable. You're right. Two favorable, three <coughs> marginal. All right. Um, indicator seven is personnel costs. Um, so total personnel expenses are slowly increasing as a percentage of our operating. Um, expenses. So we've gone from 48.5% to 53.5%. So over whatever, since 2013 is what we have the data here for. Um, the, we broke it down into non-school salaries, school salaries, and health benefits. Um, We can see the data there. The difference between the non-school salaries and the school salaries don't look quite right, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because uh, Frontier is not included in there. Frontier is not included in there. That's correct. Yep. And in, in any one given year, they might have um, uh, used uh, school choice more than another year to pay some of those They've salaries. They've been good at that. So that might be some of the back and forth. Couple of things when it comes to school salaries. <clears throat> where are the where are the benefits? There's the benefits separate... the benefits are all in in the in the general. But fund. what I'm saying is, you've got benefits uh, over here, right? That that includes all benefits. Uh, no, it doesn't. 
Well, it, it includes it includes the health insurance for both the school and the town. It yep. includes unemployment for both, yep. workers' comp for both, um, Medicare for both. Yep. So what are you referring to? The money that we pay into the uh, Franklin County it retirement. Includes, it includes that. You don't put a cent in there for teachers. And that's the big one. But we do for all the instructional aides and all the other people that work for the school. So it, so it, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, I, and I can tell you what that exact dollar amount is because um, I need that every year for the report mm -hmm. to get done. And, and that, isn't, that doesn't change year to year. All of the teachers, there is no, the town or, nor the schools pay anything into the uh, teacher's retirement system. Correct. The teachers pay into it at the same rate that and they the get that. It's a deduction out of, their, from the state. out of their pay. And there's is, is a retirement that comes uh, come from the state. I think, I think it does. I'm not exactly sure. Doesn't come out of Franklin County. <clears throat> comes from the state. The state they vote that in Boston. Yeah, and, and well, yeah, and and so anything over and above the. Nine, eleven percent that is paid in by each employee. The state covers for teacher retirement. At one time, they used to break down the uh, health insurance so you would show how much you got for the school employees versus the town, and that percentage was always a lot higher for the school than for the town mm -hmm. because you have a lot more employees at the school. Right, we started the doing same that way I think with in unemployment. 2017 or 18, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. So so we're, we're doing that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we so look we're, at the we're, we're, budget, we're putting we'll the number that. in there. It does, it's not part of the school budget. And it only includes the elementary school because Frontier does have to budget that on their end. So I think what we're seeing, if we look at, for example, just non-school salaries, we've gone from 14% to 15.3%. So we've very slowly increased non-school salaries as a percentage of our total budget. Um, but that's a very slow. Um, that would be your argument, yep. <laughs> Which we're not going to talk about right now. So, um, so what goes into this? One is the number of people and the number of hours and all that kind of thing that they're getting, but then also whether their salaries are increasing at two and a half percent. assessment for this is, is this something worth looking at breaking it out yeah. and looking at it it is <laughs> so the, the the budget for salaries and benefits what percentage of the total what what percentage does that equate to for the total out of the total budget, um, budget? so that's the 80 like percent Figure or something like that. What for the school? Everybody. <clears throat> well, I mean, she's no, it's just over 50. Yeah, she's got, it's gone from 48. She's 45 15, to 15, and the, for the school, it's a yeah, high a percentage. 50, right? mm -hmm. That they use the general fund for, for a good percentage of their salary. The school does. Yeah, and it looks That's like right the there. 53.66. 23.6 to 27.3. Julie, are there benchmarks for this one? Because this seems like the sort of thing that um, could have a meaningful benchmark on what a municipality should have as a percentage of personnel costs. I mean, every every community is going to be different, but I don't know. But that's a good question that we can ask. I'm thinking about my own um, industry 
professionally and like there are very clear benchmarks on what percentage you know is good what percentage is questionable and and what's not good and you know it it seems like we're pretty steady i'm not surprised to see personnel costs rising because everything's rising um i think if they were decreasing we would feel that although this isn't just you know amount this is also as a percentage Mm -hmm. what we're spending. That's yeah. The, that's the more concerning. Yeah. But, but even that makes sense to me because, you know, this is starting 2013, right? And then, I don't know, I, I guess in my, in my experience, you know, my perception of the world, it seems like there's been a lot of time to make up a lot of um, growth that didn't happen during the recession that, you know, towns and, and, companies have been kind of making up for, you know, people have stopped, you know, people have been leaving their jobs or they've been, you know, demanding what, what, you know, they feel they deserve or, or there's been more, you know, changes in um, just in expectations of, of like pers personnel, how many people it takes to do the job, how many hours, um, you know, and, and, and who, who can do it. So I don't know. To me, to me again, this looks this looks okay, but it'd be nice to compare you know, if there's an ideal. Do we want to leave it un unassessed, and I will go out and try and find the benchmark and come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have them yeah, if we can find out. I've actually had the exact same question in the opposite direction. How much should we be spending on capital every year as a percentage and whether so I, as a benchmark sort of idea. So um, I will scrounge around and see if I can find any. That I mean, it's, it's really clear that of, the two, of the three, it's school salaries that's driving it up. Pretty much. Yeah. Right, and non-school salaries are pretty stable. Yeah, one percent. Okay. Um, so we will move on. Indicator at eight is pension liability. Um, the first one is just the retirement system. In my opinion, this is favorable, but it's sort of externally imposed. Um, so so the pension liability um, we the state decided that town should make a commitment to fund the pension liability um, and the when they initially put this expectation in place, they wanted the everybody to be fully funded by 2028. Then they revised that goal in 2010 um, to extend it to 2040, and they expect all the towns to be fully funded by 2040. But FERCOG is handling this. They just make an assessment, and we pay them what they ask for. Um, and we have been steady over the past few um, years since 2014 looking at a 2034 2035 fully funded date and are paying into that so um does anybody have a is everybody okay with favorable on this it's like it's not really anything we can do anything about right but um i think we're doing as well as any other town around yeah i think we're doing fine all right so we'll move on. Indicator 8A is OPEB liability, um, which is um, we have not, we have contributed a small amount. We have a sort of established, um, I wouldn't even call it a plan. We have an established approach at the moment, which is a percentage, what is it? 4% 4 4 of last year's whatever. Um, that we're paying into it. So we're paying a token amount towards it and you know it's slowly increasing, but we are at 1.3%. Um, I personally feel like the total bill 
seems higher than it should be. Um, so I think in right. 50 years, when we finally pay this off, the total amount will be okay. You know, so, 10 years ago, this liability existed. It just wasn't down on Wall Street. Wasn't recognized. The Governor County Standard Board said, hey, you need to put it on the balance sheet. Yeah. Yep. It's, we know it's existed, but now we want to recognize it. Right. And it was always paid off until then. And the thing yeah. is, we're on a system right now, pay as you go. Yep. Right. And that system has worked. But guess what? They want us to save all the money for OPEB, but the state's still not saving anything. Is that right? They're not saving nothing. So what they're doing is they're dictating from the pulpit, telling you what you have to do, who you have to believe in, what you have to follow for the guiding principles. And I remember one governor got up there probably a long time ago when I was a selectman, and he says that he feels that his OPEP should be started once we finish the unfunded liability for the workers. OPEP should follow that as a follow-up. That makes a lot of sense. And Which you can just makes roll a, that amount over that you're paying. So that way yeah. you'll already be up to a certain point and you can start putting in more. Yeah. My only concern with OPEP is SCEMS. And the reason I've got a concern about SCEMS is I just want to make sure that since this is a multi-town agreement, that SCEMS is putting in enough money because they have the assets that are available and they do a great job. But I just want to make sure that they're putting in enough to cover for the employees. And it's our liability, 100% of our liability, because it's under our payroll. But I'm not sure they're putting in that kind of money, because from what I remember, one of those classes that we had here with Barbara probably six or eight years ago, the liability back then, we should be putting in a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And I don't think they're putting enough money in. They're That's putting in. They're putting in exactly what the town is putting in. A measly four percent of and our last year's. four percent is not adequate. Exactly. And so what happens is, if you're going to do it, you should segregate it by, you know, town employees are one issue, but tri county employees are another issue. I think. I think you. That's unfair. I think you need to be treating everybody equally. So if you're going to charge EMS. 10%, then the town should be charged 10% also that's, so that we're all putting in equal amounts. That's not correct though. What's the, the fallacy in that is that you think that we got to treat everybody equally, but we don't have to because the tri town, the, the three town consortium is there and they have the funds available and they should be contributing their share, even if the town can't afford to put in our share now. So if we, we have some stuff that we share, just a second, I'm going to make this comment. Then, so we have some stuff that we share, like administrative bills and stuff that that is stuff that we pay that we then ask the other towns to support. Like it, the, the 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 enterprise costs. fund reimburses the general fund for those for that right. allocation for that cost. But there's also like senior center. Is there anything we do that center? with the senior and, center as well? Um, and the wastewater treatment and plant, wastewater so all and three. Scams, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so does the. Um, so all the, all three that. of them. Well, the. the mm. So the all stuff the we're paying right treatment now employees pay as are you go. All, What's that? The stuff we're paying right now pay as you go that will be covered by this OPEB fund if we ever have any money in it in the future. Is that being parceled out like that? It is. So? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that gets added into their. To their allocation, what what they yeah. pay us for. But the differentiation that I was trying to make was, if you take the sound town sewer employees, those are all town of Deerfield employees. Right. They're not Whiteley employees. They're not Sunderland employees. They're one hundred percent town of Deerfield employees. Correct. So we can waylay that liability if we want. But if you have a good managed business like EMS. They should be putting in what is considered a fair share for their portion, because if we're, we're not collecting from Sunderland and Whiteley, because guess what? Well, it's in, they their, it's in, two it's to in one. their it's in their budget. So of course, Whiteley well, and Sunderland pay for their share. Well, the question is, are they putting in enough in the budget? That's my concern. That's my only concern. 
I want to make sure it's fair for the liability for the town of Deerfield. Lo yeah, that's long, right. Long term liability. That's right. Because it's our liability. We can say, yeah, let's be fair, 4%, 4%. 4% doesn't cut the mustard, though. And 4% don't cut the mustard. Is What does cut the mustard and what should we have it increased to to make sure they're putting in their fair share? Because otherwise, what we're doing is we're going to put in the 4% from the town of Deerfield, have them put it in, but yet another 8% could have been contributed because of their employees. Allison has her hand up. Thanks. Um, I, I think whenever we talk about OPEB, it's really helpful to define it because it's actually a pretty complicated, um, I, I, I find it to be a pretty complicated um, thing to wrap my head around. And I actually, I even wrote like a paper on it for my master's. And every time we have it, I, I kind of have to look it up again. So I think it's it's one of those things that is very easy to oversimplify. Um and I, th there's, you know, research done. I think the general consensus nationally is that OPEB is underfunded across the board. It's a major, it's a major crisis among municipalities. So, you know, our, our o OPEB is underfunded. I think we're mandated to put something in as like a show of good faith, but it, there's a huge gap to, to, to bridge. Um, and it's going to take a very long time, decades to get there. Um, and I think maybe my perspective on this is a little different because I, you know, I am that um, millennial generation that is going to be bearing that burden of, of the retirees, you know, as, as they age out for, for my working career um, with the, you know, the diminishing working population and that sort of a piece that's like a big piece of this is that um, there's like a lot of upcoming expenses that just aren't on the books. I don't think that having to put, put money aside in the way that we're mandated to start accounting for it, I actually don't think that came from the governor. I think that came from the accounting board or the whatever the government version of that is. I don't think that's a political decision. Yeah, so right now we're not mandated to put money away. We're mandated to track the liability yeah. um, with sort of this recognition that that yeah. liability is out there, but it's not like the, like the pension liability, there's a mandated you have, you're supposed to have it done by this. And I, I think for OPEB, we are maybe not, we're not required, but as part of our, um, like our rating, I think yes, yep. we need to be putting some money away. Exactly. So Trevor, you had a comment like yeah, an hour ago. I just, um, <laughs> and, and I agree that, that the idea to switch over once it's paid off, but my big fear, as Ali alluded to, is that delta between all the baby boomers who are retiring and the load, like we've been able to handle that load now because all the baby boomers are, are, have been working and now we're all gonna like retire real quick and we're seeing that happen. And, Gen X doesn't have enough of us to kind of produce enough money to cover that cost. So that, you know, it's pretty good right now, but then all of a sudden there's this big delta and it, to bridge that, I think we should be putting more away now to get us so that it's not such a huge delta at that time frame. If we can get to, um, if we can get to, uh, like use some of the solar funds or some of the marijuana money that's coming in just as a bridge until we can get to that, you know, until we can start taking some of that retirement, <coughs> that pension money. Um, I'm really looking for ways to find some revenue stream to just bring that up a little bit so that delta is not so great at that. At that How point. much marijuana money have we gotten in? That's what I thought. We could use all of that. Though. Yes, we could. We can use <laughs> all of this egg. <laughs> They've used it all. Right. We've used every so bit of it. They're all committed everything. It would be curiously appropriate. No, no they've used more it. than that. <laughs> so we're Can, uh, a little bit off the subject. But for those people who are not town employees or not state employees, what's happened with your pension? future pension 
the, your employer's contribution to your pension system. I mean, one of the things that I've noticed, but I'm no longer in that group, is that you know the general, the non-public private employers have kind of done their best to try to get employees to do the 401k plans, right. which they do contribute to, but they're bit. trying to get rid of the pensions. They, okay. Yeah, you, you can't get a pension job. But they're really rare just as a, you know, as a 30 something, like you have to work for the town if you're going to get a pension job. Um, or, or a hedge fund. <laughs> Too much money. Maybe, yeah. Then you can but retire this is okay, 45. so this is non pension Yeah. You, right. you did say it was slightly off topic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, so it, it is. For the the most thing part. is, that's what's happening in to the general what group. Do I want to call it private, private, private industry? Yeah. Private industry. And at what point in time does the government then go that way too? Well, y yes. Or does the do those private employ industry employees turn around and say, "What I'm paying in taxes." whether it's sales taxes, real estate taxes, whatever taxes. And these are going to fund pensions for some people, but I don't have those pensions anymore. Access to the, I mean, my, my parents' generation received pensions. It wasn't that they were getting Hundred thousand dollars a year, but there was something. Uh, My generation does not expect a pension, nor do we all expect to receive Social Security. Right. Yep. You know, we we're my my generation is not. It's it's not even a question my employees when we're hiring ask, um, because it's not even in the vernacular anymore. It'll be gone. Yeah. It's all nope. gone. What's your thought about Social Security? Social Security is the same as OPEB, sort of. Um, you know, the current workers are funding it for, for the people who are collecting it. And uh, by the time I get there, the population will be such that there, no, there won't be enough people funding it. Um, so I'm not counting on receiving it, even though I will be paying into it, you know. And, you know, who knows what will happen in the next 50 years, but... <laughs> Well, I'll throw my two cents worth in. You're paying into it. You damn well need to demand that you get <laughs> you get to that point. I'll, I'll demand with my with my uh, you know votes over the next few decades. But the trust fund was set up so that the politicians in Washington could play with the money oh, yeah. and put an IOU in there and say, "Well, this is an entitlement, so we can vote on it any way we want." Yep. They've changed in the name of the game. Yeah, we've been kicking the can down the road a long time. Yeah, but I would, if, if we do see a stream of revenue, I would love to come to you and say, this, let's put a portion And we would of love to in. have you do that. Yes, Three. I'll find one. And you know one other thing I would like to ask for you? Yeah. I would like to see if you could arrange to give the Finance Committee an update on the surge stream of plant sure. currently, yep. what the potential cost is gonna be because the initial projection that they had was that everybody starting as soon as they this refunding is over that it, uh, each individual user is going to start paying two thousand dollars minimum per year that's what the initial projection was two thousand dollars a year so if you take two thousand dollars a year for 40 years of funding that means it's costing everybody who's on a sewer eighty thousand dollars to build a sewer plant that they're going to use. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the figures for you for sure. So yep. it'd be great if you could bring us up to date because I know you got an authorization for 19 million, but I don't remember what your current bid is out there. The current like 16, authorized contract. 16 right now for phase one, which took in some of phase two. 15 million, okay. Six, 16. 16 million. Which, yeah, which did include some of phase two. But and, not, and, and then there's probably 3 million left but not enough to do everything we wanted in phase two, I don't think, by the, because of the cost of everything right now. And what's the current thinking on what you're going to do with the old Deerfield plant? Uh, that, that's not I'm going to have here. a meeting tomorrow on that. Uh, 
um, to kind of talk about. Most Wednesday, right? Yep. Yeah. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Would um, we have a, a meeting down for plans to just you know up monthly update on that? Then we're going to come back here and talk about what we're going to do for phase two sure. there, and then try to have a discussion on what we should do with that plan. And really, it's and we're, we're you know labor is really hard right now, but I think we're we're seeing some light after this last article in the paper, which is really nice. Believe it or not. I thought the light coming through the tunnel was the train coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a big expense of, you know, 15 million to redo that plant or. Or do we put in pumping stations and ship it up here? Yeah, ship it up here, which is double the cost probably. And, it, yeah. and, it's and then you important. can pick up some houses along the way, which may help some people. It would. <laughs> and also open up more development for more people to sell off yeah. their land to make, put in more houses. And new growth. New yeah. growth, yep, yeah. for sure. So and that's a decision I think everybody really needs to, I mean, pretty soon we should start talking about, because that plant, it's just Band-Aids right now. And I know. It's really tough to figure out what to do. So yeah. anyway, I would appreciate if you would talk with our chairman and schedule a time so we can of course. kind of get together and yes. really get updated on that. I will. I sure will. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. What? Motion to adjourn, anybody? Oh, so moved. Are we done? Second. <laughs> can we? We're done. We're done. we can we? have discussion for a second before we vote. Any, are we? <laughs> so our next meeting is scheduled is going to be February 8th, which is a Tuesday at 5 p.m. February um, 8th. Unless, uh, can I express okay. a couple of concerns I have? Not yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just to put them on the table? For, yes. Uh, watching the meeting last night, the hearing about the park, and I know I don't know how much we appropriate like two million dollars, but mm -hmm. they're spending money for engineering studies and peer reviews, which in the past the peer review will be done by the applicant, but in this case the applicants to town is do we, does that two million dollars include all these soft costs. Yes. Is anybody tracking it to make sure we're okay. It's, we it's in a yeah. <laughs> Of course, she's right here. <laughs> it's in a capital projects fund, and so all the money that was allocated through the CPA um, uh, votes is is in that fund. And we've spent very little at this point. There really hasn't been a lot spent on it so far. Okay. Yeah, so somebody hoping okay. to group that. And we asked last night, I think the, the, our attorney had asked the planning board if they could group the peer review or the um, stormwater to be the planning board and con com. So it's, you're not, the con conservation commission isn't asking for another peer review. Right. They can use the same. That's a, peer that was a good idea. Both. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. The, my other concern is there's been discussion about all these huge projects the town has to have, like the mm -hmm. library, like the new buildings. Mm -hmm. What, do we have that 25, what's the debt limit? We have, wait, we're at like 15%. 5% of the equalized value valuation. Uh, which and, it, and it's at about, what, 38,000 or 38 million that we can, that we can borrow at this point with, within the debt limit. Now I know right. you can go outside the debt limit, particularly for wastewater treatment plant projects, but I don't I advise the town even to. Somebody put a pencil that. to that. If, if kind of like financial suicide. Yeah. Okay. If somebody put a pencil to that, if we do all these projects, are we going to be okay? No. No. We no. couldn't do them all. We can't do no them all. Way. There's just no way. So oh, then we're going to have to prioritize them. Yeah. We are yes. going to have to prioritize them. Yep. Has the council started a priority schedule? We, we've this been thinking hard about it. Oh, sorry. I, I might, I, there might be a little delay. I, with the priorities, I know there's that committee that's talking about all the different projects. Um, I think it would be good to have the finance committee involved, maybe kind of early on. If there's a committee that is going to come to a consensus about which priorities, you know, they they have and which things might not happen, um, might be good to communicate that early. If they're at a standstill, which is sort of what I've heard, that the conversation hasn't really been what you know which things shouldn't happen or which things are need to happen first um it seems like it's more about why, why everybody's project's important which they are um it's just what i've been hearing i haven't attended any of those meetings um i it, i then i think it might be worthwhile to have the finance committee participating 
or early to at least weigh in on like what's realistic. Um, what, you know, and also maybe share our opinions, but I don't think our, our opinions are as important as setting some boundaries about like that what. Matrix to be a great thing to upload there. Yeah, so um, I can say for the CCI committee, there's a CCI committee meeting in three minutes um, oh. starting, so oh, I need to. I remember that. It, okay. It's tonight, right? Is I don't it know. Tonight? Six, Something starting at, oh, at yeah. seven o'clock, which is why I have to be done. No, it starts at seven. Um, whatever it is that's starting at it's seven. It's totally tonight. remote, I think. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, so the CCI up to date has been gathering data and writing up a thing that the um, Carolyn can take, Carolyn and Denise, I think, yeah. can take to the MMA, MMA conference, conference um, to conference. use to try and drum up money for different projects. So it's yeah. sort of a, if life were perfect and we had mm -hmm. all the money we wanted, Absolutely. this is what we would like to do. And then looking for sources of funding to, to do that. Um, in all of these discussions, I've been presenting from the finance committee's point of view, exactly what we're talking about. This is our debt limit. This is how much we already have. This is how much money is left. You know, This is our tax bill going up and we want to avoid that. So, so that information is out there, but um, all, obviously all of those meetings are open and any of us committee folks could go. Right. The, uh, on, on, so the Capital Improvement Committee is meeting, according to this, uh, tomorrow night at 6.30. It's all remote. There's a school board meeting tomorrow night also? There's a school board meeting, I think, tonight and tomorrow night. Maybe that's elementary what's starting Elementary school and the high school. Tonight? No, tonight? No, the, the CCI is at 7. Thank you. <laughs> um, before we turn, uh, just, just wanted to say that at this point, um, Trevor says that we're planning on town meeting on the last Monday in April. And so far, at yes. Okay. okay. We've also been talking about a special town meeting in February, but. Oh, you probably need one in March too, because you have more expenditures that you want to make. Well, we need to allocate the money to pay off that loan before it's due. Before April. And you also, everybody's heard that Barb is leaving, right? Yes. Um, unfortunate. Barb Hancock. Yeah, that is unfortunate. That is. Um, everybody got a chance to bring a check in just so she'll feel good before she leaves. <laughs> yes, yeah, so tax are due Friday. All those tax, tax are due Friday. Ready. Make sure you say thank you for your service. And yes, for sure. And here's a check to make sure you feel good. Yes. <laughs> Not to you, but to the town. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, okay. I will second uh, Jim's uh, motion. We already All right. adjourn. All in favor of adjourning, just say aye. 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 opposed? It's unanimous. So we're not going to do roll call. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we will so see you February. Month, huh? We will Thanks. see you February 8th, um, unless we come up with something. Well, no, you know what? We might need to meet before I'm then if they do a special town meeting. Guys, so I yeah. Think but, but as it stands, but as it stands, February 8th. And he wants to do the sewer thing.